are so caught up in our nine to fives and we're so caught up in you know this hunt for religion and for divinity and I think sometimes we we really lose our sense of um, innocence and wonder and connection to the stories and the beliefs in the impossible and the magical that we have as children. So I wanted to find a writer as an editor who would write a memoir that I would of course commission on um, an earnest search, you know, someone who is believable but logical, who could go out there and interview believers and see if there really was something to all of this fairy belief because the more that I paid attention to it, the more that I found there were people who really did believe. So um, I was talking to a literary agent um, one night over cocktails and I said, you know, do you know, I was trying to get the word out around town, do you know a writer, do you know a writer who could do this? And she's, we got to talking and maybe had a few too many glasses of Chardonnay and <laughs> she said, um, well actually, I think you should write it. And so this is my agent who I'm with still today, and she really encouraged me to undertake this journey, which led me to um, quit my job as an editor because I needed to take three months to go into the fields, literally, and research uh, fairy folklore, which is really in England folklore, um, and uh, see if I couldn't find clues to try to prove the existence, prove or disprove the existence of fairies in our modern world. Little did I know it was going to change my life forever. Um, my husband and I relocated to Charleston, South Carolina, where we live now, and then I left to go to Ireland, Scotland, England, and Isle of Man, um, researching believers in the world of fairies. And so that is really what my book is about, and it's also a book about uh, coming to terms with the death of my father because I was working a million hours in New York City and really didn't have a, a belief system and fairies, although I had been so connected to fairies and any magical being as a little girl I really had um, become disillusioned as, as an adult and I, I didn't have any sort of faith to fall back on when my father passed away unexpectedly so for me you know, the, the book also is a memoir about how do we come to terms with the loss of a loved one when it is so sudden. Um, my memories of him, and um, I felt in a way that if I could find a clue about the existence of fairies, that to me it meant there was the possibility of everything else. There was the possibility that my father could be here tonight among us, you know, maybe unseen but listening. So um, as I went through and I met incredible people, I began to realize that there is more that goes on beyond the realm of human perception and that there are ways that we can tune into it. And so it has really changed the course of my life because now I spend much of my time talking about ways in which we can tune in and I'm especially very connected to those ancient fairy and folklore and um, I think there's a huge resurgence happening now, especially in England and definitely in the United States.